33 has a big future ahead of him if he can keep going. Five feet, 10 inches in height, he's got a two inch advantage over Hernandez. An arm length advantage of a half inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist for the Chicago area fighter. They both weighed in within two pounds of the featherweight limit. Tonight, unofficially, Jason Litzow weighs 134, and Jose Hernandez will weigh 133. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Jason Litzow, Jose Hernandez fight is scheduled for 10 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Chip, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. Here's a good look at Jose Hernandez, who came from Juarez, Mexico, as a boy with his family to the Chicago area, eventually took up boxing because he found the individual responsibility better than team sports. He's lost three times, had good excuses for the first two losses. The third one against a fighter named Escalante last year was a loss. And he took responsibility for that, just said, you know, I got beat. The interesting thing to me, Litzow calls himself the all-American boy, the all-American fighter. Really, Hernandez epitomizes kind of middle American, middle class values. Parents married, owns his own bar with his dad, a small business. Very interesting guy for a boxer. Give us a closer look, Max. 97 National Golden Gloves champion. That's a big title to win as an amateur, has a good amateur pedigree. He's pursuing a law degree, talking about middle class values, not just in some kind of you know, hereafter, maybe I'll pursue it. He has 32 college credits done. And he can neglect defense, Jim, which we always like to see, especially if his opponent also neglects defense. That's promising. Now here comes Jason Litzow and Lennox Lewis. Litzow has the kind of devastating personal background. Alcoholic mother, drug addicted father, brutal stepfather, horribly broken home. That causes some fighters to carry rage throughout their career. Is rage a good thing for a fighter? Well, it depends if you can react off of rage, if, it, if you allow it to affect you. I always like going in the ring with a clear head and not too much stuff, things on my mind because I perform a lot better. When you have a lot of things on your mind, you can't perform at your top because those things are always in the back of your mind giving you pressure. But Jason Litzow, don't let me fool you. He's not consumed by rage despite his difficult background. In fact, in our meeting this morning, Max, Litzow projected enormous joy at his chances here. He did. He, um, he's really from the fractured family. The all-American boy, but grew up not in quite third world conditions, but in back to that these are the best holidays ever for him. Great Thanksgiving. If he wins, it would be the best possible Christmas present to his family. He recently bought a front-loading washer dryer, which from Jason Litzow's impoverished background is a huge deal to him. By the way, no payments until 2008. He plans on making money in the future in boxing. And he too, Jim, look at that. He can neglect defense. Oh, we're in for a treat. Two out of two, not bad. Let's go to ring announcer Lupe Contreras for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Miccosukee Resort and Casino in Miami, Florida, for an evening of boxing after dark being brought to you by Main Events in association with Dominic Vasoli's Eight Count Productions and Rockstar Energy Drink. Party like a rock star. These bouts are being sanctioned by the Mikasuki Athletic Commission chairman is Billy Cypress. Assistant chairman is Jasper Nelson. Commissioners this evening are Andrew Burt, Max Billy, and William Osceola. Legal counsel is Juan Vargas. Executive director is Don Hazelton. And the tribe's executive boxing consultant is Paul Herman. Timekeeper, we have Carmine Chiracella. And our positions at ringside are Roberto del Cristo, along with Stanley Simpson. All of tonight's bouts are being scored under the 10-point must system using the rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our co-featured bout of the evening, set for 10 rounds of boxing in the featherweight division. The judges are Don O'Neill, Michael Pernick, and Peter Trematerra. The referee, Frank Santor Jr. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he steps into the ring wearing the brown trunks trimmed in silver and weighing in at an official 127 pounds. His professional record, 21 victories, along with three losses 
and 13 of his victories coming by way of knockout. The Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico, and fighting out of Round Lake, Illinois, Jose Andres Hernandez. His opponent across the ring in the blue corner. He steps in wearing American red, white, and blue, and weighing in at an official 128 pounds. As a professional, he is undefeated with 20 victories. 18 of his victories coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of St. Paul, Minnesota, Jason, the American boy, Litzow. Here we go. All right, guys, we're going over all the instructions. Your belt, you're both about where they're supposed to be. Gentlemen, when I tell you to break, I want you to break, take a step back. Let's don't make me wrestle with it, all right? If we have any questions for either one of you, good luck to both of you. This could be a treat. Both fighters can box. Both fighters can punch. Both fighters, as Max has pointed out, may have a tendency from time to time to neglect defense. Perhaps the fans get their money's worth right away. When you neglect defense, that means you have a good offense. Jason Litzau working behind his jab early in the fight. And I think the difference between them is Litzau chooses to fight offensively at times, and Hernandez is a little bit more limited in that he must fight offensively. He can't do quite as many things as Litzau, not quite the athlete. And you can see already how Litzau is longer and uses his athletic body more liberally in the ring. Hernandez trying to stay in a more compact style and fight like a fighter. Litzau mentioned he could spend the first couple rounds boxing at a range, but that he wouldn't do it all night. He's looking for the knockout. And the early return, it seems to me, Lennox, is when both of them jab, Litzau's jab is longer and gets there. And more effective. I like his kind of boxing. He's got that shaky boxing. He's not there. Real loose fluid type of boxing, which which I like. How important is relaxation? Well, relaxation is very important because it, it saves your energy for one thing, and you know it keeps you loose for even if you get a punch, you know you don't take it because you're you're so rigid. You have to be loose so you can flow with the shots. Litzau with a right hand over the top. He's a very good right-handed puncher. Has that long, lanky puncher's kind of build. He gets a lot of leverage on that shot. And Litzau with another, excuse me, Litzau takes a right hand in close from Hernandez. Hernandez trying to reach with his jab a little bit. Litzau is landing his, but he lets it go. Now a good right hand by Litzau. He moves away and moves into position to fire two left hooks. Second one to the body. Litzau is moving here and boxing, but he's doing it in an entertaining fashion. He's really putting, he has bad intentions on those shots. Hernandez is just following Jason around, and that's the wrong thing to do. You can't follow a boxer, puncher around because he's just setting traps for you. And Jason's doing a great job at setting traps. Now there's a good uppercut by Hernandez. is now looking at a possible 10-8 round, in fact, a probable 10-8 round, based on the right-hand knockdown of Litzau. And Litzau may have simply gotten too relaxed, and now he's hurt by a second right hand. See if Litzau makes it out of the round against Jose Hernandez. Max Kellerman told you about the tendency to neglect defense. Litzau seemed to go to sleep. And let me tell you, Litzau was still hurt then, but he's okay. It seems like his legs is gone a little bit. He doesn't realize how badly hurt he is. 
Keep walking to the right. Walk away from the right hand. Walk this way, all right? Don't worry about sitting. You're going to knock this motherfucker out, right? He's smart, okay? He's got the good right hand. Walk this way, all right, baby? It'd be nothing. You're going to have everything's coming right back right now. You stay with him. Hear me? Don't step straight back, okay? Who can? When you throw that right hand, cut, it, cut the right hand short and come back with what? Tell me. Hook. The left hook. Right. Come back with that left hook. You hear me? Cut it short. And here's the first look at the, the knockdown. And it seemed like he just dropped his left hand a little bit and he was able to come across with the right hand and take down Let's Go with that right hand. Great right hand. Here he comes. A bit too close to him, put the left hand down and got open for that right hand. Well, as we said, the neglects defense. Jason Litzow's left hand was near his waist when Hernandez landed the right uppercut and the right cross that knocked him down. CompuBox nudges in round one. Litzow was 25 out of 62. Hernandez wound up 16 out of 69. 10 of those connects came in the third minute of the round. And Jason Litzow is, is, is definitely allowing him to get to him with the right hand too easily. He needs to keep his right uh, left hand up a bit higher. A couple of things, guys. Litzow's temperament, you saw right away, even without his legs, on the verge of being knocked out, was firing big shots back. He has the temperament of a real fighter and an exciting fighter. And you heard his trainer, Bob Van Sickle, say between rounds, you're going to knock this guy out. Remember that. Well, right now, he's probably down 10-8 on all three cards after the first round. And he's getting creamed with the right hand. His corner said, move away from the right hand. Problem is, Hernandez has a good left hook, and Litzow's only other knockdown in his career came against Johnny Nolasco. Not silly with a left hook, though he did get up and go on to win the fight. This guy needs to be careful because you may feel okay up top in the head, but your legs are still a little, little bit wobbly. And Litzow still does not seem nearly as in command of his balance and his athletic quality in there, as was the case in the first two and a half minutes of round one before he got hit with that right hand. I think this round he's just trying to get his head together and realize that he did get hurt a couple of times and now he's just thinking about a way of knocking out his opponent. Well, Jose Hernandez, and as Max mentioned, he won a 1997 Golden Gloves championship. That was a national championship as an amateur. Decided to turn professional without going the distance to try to make the 2000 Olympic team. Now he's talking about law school. It's almost as though he's never really focused entirely on his pro boxing career. But the talent, as you can see, is there. Lennox, what can Litzow do to be getting away from that right hand? Whether it's short or long, it seems to be landing. Well, what he needs to do is definitely tuck his chin, chin down into his left shoulder a bit more, so not an easy target. Right now, he's just leaving it open like, out, out there. Lits out with a series of power punches. Back to Hernandez into the corner. When Jason decides to let his hands go, Hernandez is often on the defensive because Jason is the longer fighter. Jason Litzkow does something very important that a lot of boxers need to know. You know, he goes in there, he throws some good punches. When he finishes punches, he gets out of sight. Doesn't stay there and then look at his look at the work that he's just done. Right hand by Litzau. Hernandez walking through it, coming forward. And Litzau's landed what he might have thought were some pretty big shots in the first couple of rounds, but Hernandez has taken them very well. Now listen, you very careful. Move to your right, away from his right hand. Don't, when you're done, don't go straight back. He's just following you with a right hand, remember? All right, deep breaths, deep breaths. Give me some water in a minute. Keep moving to your right. And don't stand in front of him after you hit him some beautiful shots. All right, baby? This is, you know, 10 rounds, you got plenty of rounds. That was one round in the bag. And right, we're just gonna keep picking up the rounds, picking up the rounds. You're gonna get your second win. Because you're looking for it, and he's making you, starting to make you miss. Okay. Only throw it when you're in close. When you're in close, I want you to touch it with that uppercut and come back with the right hook. He's open for it, okay? He's open for it. It's important. Once you're inside. Jose Hernandez, his trainer is Sam Colonna, a fixture in Chicago whom we've seen with quite a number of fighters over the years, most notably Angel Manfredi. Copy box numbers in the second round. Lits out 20 out of 56. Hernandez threw the same number of punches, 56, given credit only for landing 11. 
you heard Sam Colonna asking Hernandez, get him to come close, hit him with a right uppercut and the right cross again. That's what knocked him down. You know what we have here, and maybe technique, maybe Hernandez's shorter punches will carry the day. But we have one guy, Hernandez, from an intact family, good relationship with his father, and as I was mentioning, very middle American, middle class values. And while he was having a good relationship with his father, Hernandez, Litzau's stepfather was banging his and his little he brother's heads together in a battle where it come, if it comes down to attrition and who wants it more. Hard to imagine that Litzau's fracture, fractured background and anger about that background might not make the difference. May not come down to that. Hernandez reaching again with the right hand, trying to follow through on Sam Colonna's instructions. Litzau has done a better job this round of getting away from that right hand. Trainer Bob Van Sickle asked him simply to walk away from the right hand, and he's done a better job here. Good left hook by Litzau in that sequence. And Litzau better be careful right now because he's still throwing some combinations and putting that left hand down. Well, so many offensively oriented fighters, Lennox, want the relaxation and the freedom they get from lowering the left hand but it's always an invitation to any right-hand puncher. Well, the main thing about the left hand being down, you gotta be far enough away from uh, your opponent before you throw a punch. And right now, Litzau is not far, far away from him. He needs to be a little further away. And the fact that he is closer, he needs to keep his hand a little bit higher. Even when he is far away, though, Hernandez has a way of throwing that right hand that it seems to reach Litzau, even if not on the chin, on the top of the head, and hurt him when it reaches, when he lands. Maybe a better policy just to keep that left hand up. Good left hook to the body by Jose Hernandez. Litzau has spent much of the round focusing upstairs. Litzau lands a jab and lands it again. Now it's important if you're gonna keep that left hand down, really, it's an invitation for the other guy to throw a right hand, but you have to do something after that right hand, roll with it and come back. Long right hand over the top lands for Litzau. You get the impression if you would jab twice and step away, and there's a hard right hand by Litzau, set up by the jab, and another hard right hand, and Hernandez shows once again a quality beard as he walks through two very big punches. Jim, they were trading fight-ending punches just then. Fight-ending punches. Both fighters looking to throw that right hand in there. So. Hey, you can't stand right in front of him, you understand? And you gotta stay low. You gotta throw that jab more too. Throw that jab. When you throw your right, you gotta move that head a little bit. Okay, he's waiting for you to throw it. You understand? You got you, hey, you gotta faint once in a while too. Faint. Faint that right hand. Throw the hook. Faint when you're inside. To come up short. She's been a little too wide. He's coming right. right? But trust me, this is going to go the whole nine yards, and you're just going to keep breaking them down. You're winning. You got to keep winning each round, each round. All right. You train too hard for this. You know that. Well, you were going to take a look at both boxers landing great right hands. It looks like Lissau hits him, gets through with his punch a lot better than than Hernandez. Lissau landed two right hand bombs. Hernandez kept coming. Power punches are just about even through the seven rounds. Litzau's landed 35 and Hernandez 34. But there's a huge disparity in jab numbers with Litzau having landed about 10 times as many jabs as Jose Hernandez. Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim, 28-28, but in rounds two, rounds to one, Jason Litzau. Jim, I gotta tell you something. This ring is huge, absolutely monstrous. And Jason Litzau has been showing us some great ring generalship, bouncing to the left, bouncing to the right, bouncing back, just like he does there, to, you know, set up his shots. On the other hand, Jose Hernandez, flat-footed, moving forward, landing the hardest shots because he's flat-footed. In the first round, he nailed him. But in any case, it's all even at 28-28. Hernandez starting to build the tempo in his offense again now as round four gets underway. And Hernandez seems determined to get a little bit closer to Jason Litzau, Lennox, and fight more on the inside. He's got to step up and get inside of Litzau's jab to give himself the chance to be back in round one. Hernandez definitely needs to be closer to Jason Litzau. He, he 
he realized that his, that's his advantage to be a block closer because Jason is more of a fluid boxer and he, he likes to be on the outside. He's trying to pick him apart from the outside as well. Hernandez is a nice professional fighter. There's some desperation in the way Litzau fights, where you can see he get, if he can get through fights like this, he can be a real attraction. Now there's a low blow by Litzau. Right He'll go to a neutral corner. Referee Frank Santoro will give Jose Hernandez up to five minutes if he wants it to recover. No point they deduction. This was the first low blow of the fight. They always say up to five minutes. But and nobody after 30 ever seconds, it. it's they're always getting pressured to fight. But I'm always wondering, you know, why don't you take the full five? You ready? Why not? You okay? Keep them up. And here they are. Time. Ready to fight again. Less than a minute. Cut lands for Litzau. That's the product of Hernandez working hard to get close, but coming closer without throwing punches. You got a punch when you come in. Well, if you get that close to your opponent and you're not throwing punches, he's going to hit you. Once again, Hernandez closer, but not letting his hands go, and Litzau takes advantage. His punch count seems to be dropping just a little bit as Jason Litzau becomes more and more offensive. Litzau got away with a blow that was right on the belt line there. Referee Frank Santora let him continue. Litzau's becoming more relaxed in this fight. His shape his shapes looks very good. You see the welts, the redness on Hernandez's left side from those right hands to the body Litzau's throwing. And a, a, a welt under the left eye of Jose Hernandez from the Litzau right hand. You saw Hernandez diligently working to the body in that last exchange. Got in a good left and right hand body shot on Litzau. Jose, listen to me. You gotta wake up, you understand? You gotta start punching. When you get inside, you're looking for the big shot. You're not letting them hands go. You gotta let them both hands go. You hear me? You're in shape for this. You gotta get up first. Throw the jabs into his chest, not not on his head, because you'll walk right into him. Double that jab up and keep those elbows inside. As soon as he starts going down, you gotta let that right hand go. Off the right hand, you gotta come back with that hook. Okay? It's still dangerous. Be ready for that crap. All right? All right. Do not. Do not. You gotta keep stepping around. Think to the right. defense at all times. Think defense at all times, baby. And here's Litzau throwing a left hook to the body, but it landed a bit low. And that's because uh, Hernandez kind of pulled his head down a little bit, and uh, Jason kind of threw his punch a bit low. Often the case on low blows that the recipient of the punch is the one who's creating the downward momentum. But the job of the referee is to travel or to follow the traveling of the glove and where it lands. And you heard Sam Colonna telling Jose Hernandez between rounds exactly what. Lennox had pointed out that when he gets inside, better let his hands go, or else he's gonna get hit. Seems to me Hernandez's corner, Lennox, is giving him too many instructions. It seems a, a little bit confusing. Well, you know, when it comes to who to listen to, he's gonna listen to the person that's giving him the best advice at the time. No, I mean, I mean, even when it's one guy talking, there's a lot to do. I noticed, for instance, your former trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, he'll tell a guy to do one thing at a time. It seemed like there was a lot of information in Hernandez's corner all at once. Sometimes it's good to give a lot of information because at least he'll go out thinking about one of the one of the things that you said and do it. Let's how landed a solid left hook amid the exchanges that took place during Lennox and Max's discussion. There's a hard right hand by Jason Litzow, and Hernandez backs away, gets tagged with the left hook again. Jason Litzow is landing more and more clean power punches with each passing round. And a rifle shot right hand lands on the chin. Not only are they clean, they're long power shots. And those are the kind of great shots that you need. Those are the kind of shots, hurting shots, that's gonna knock you out. Hernandez is, is looking weary in this, in this round right now. Yeah, and Litzow is Unloading the kitchen, showing you every offensive weapon. He flashed a brilliant-looking uppercut amid the last exchange. Now there's a left hook. 
that catches Hernandez on the side of the face. Body shot by Litzow, and Hernandez once again getting close and not throwing. Same syndrome as in the last round. That's because he was hurt. He was resting at that point. I'm glad in his time, but he's doing the wrong thing. Now Hernandez starts to let his hands go again. You know, and guys, tries to apply some of the pressure back that Litzow's been putting on him. Yes, Max. Faced with an opponent who's not just didn't just cave the first time he faced his power. Litzow's responding well to the adversity first in the early rounds, and now with a, against the guy who he's unloading everything against and who's still there coming forward. Litzow's responding well. And Litzow's being the ultimate uh, boxer right now. He's doing the right thing. Throwing Litzow's a lot of good combinations. Got hit with a right hand inside, and now he has taken enough of the steam out of Hernandez that it's not bothering him to get hit with the right hand, and there you go. Multiplicity of punches in combination by Litzow and Hernandez not able to get off. There he comes, firing back with the right. Now Jason Litzow got some head movement, ability to roll with the punches, getting more relaxed as he goes along. Their heads come together and Litzow squints as though he was caught, but he has generated great momentum in the fight after having been knocked down in the first round. He's still dangerous, brother. Seriously. That's this year's final installment of Real Sports with Brian Gumbel among the stories. A look at the proliferation of 300-pound high school football players and the health risks they incur by being that size. And don't play with this guy. He's still dangerous, all right? This is the big time. This is the pros, all right? Or an HBO, all right? So keep being smart, keep, don't step back. It's the only time you're getting hit is when you step back. When you're done, step over. You understand me? All right, baby. Stop loading up and hit, pat, hit, pat, hit, then let the big punches go. You hear me? Okay. You have to step it up. You have to. Go again. Not to move. You know, Jose Hernandez, CompuBox numbers in the fifth round, 18 out of 64, not all that bad. What a round Jason Litzow had. Landing 41 out of 88 punches. You land 41 punches in a round, you've done a lot of work. 12 of them were jabs, 29 were power shots. Jason Litzow has gotten his offense going. He's definitely woken up in this fight. And the type of boxing he does is that longevity boxing, because if he was in closer, you know, there's always that chance you can get hit with a headbutt. Hard right hand by Hernandez. Another right hand by Hernandez. When he comes back in the fight, it's usually as the result of a couple of good, sharp right hands, mimicking, of course, his big moment in round one when he caught Litzow with a right uppercut and then a right cross and knocked him down. Hernandez is very flat-footed, and, you know, when you receive shots when you're flat-footed like that, they hurt a lot more. So another advantage of boxing, then, and being on your toes is that it helps you take the punch. Yeah, absolutely. Blood from the left nostril now of Jose Hernandez. Product of one of Litzow's power punches. Good and left hook moves Hernandez. Hernandez is taking some power shots, some good power stop, shots. Stop. Don't, Don't know how long, long he's going to be able to take these for. And Litzow is a puncher, a really big right-handed puncher especially. There's the right hand. Good left hook by Hernandez. Hernandez giving as good as he gets on the inside in that sequence. Litzow backing up, looking for punching room in this giant ring. Lennox, you say you like a big ring like this. I love a big ring because, you know, you're able to move around, especially a big guy like me. I love a big ring because, you know, you move two times and your back doesn't touch the ropes and you can do what you want in there. Increasingly, Litzow imposes his strength and his will on Hernandez, pushing him back into range, hitting him with both hands. Something interesting just happened where Litzow was hit twice with right hands that bothered him and his reaction was to just go back in there and fight harder. And he takes an uppercut from Hernandez and takes a right hand and keeps on coming with both hands. Litzow landing a left hook after Hernandez landed both the uppercut and the right cross. 
There, there looks to be a little more give in Hernandez right now than there was a couple rounds ago. Both fighters have shown courage in the fight. Litzau coming back from the first round knockdown. Hernandez taking many, many power shots in the last three rounds. Jason Litzau is starting to have some fun in there. And here's the man who wants to have fun later tonight. Edison Pantera Miranda from Colombia. Trains in Puerto Rico. Lives part of the time here in Miami now where his promoter is based. Edison Miranda is coming off of two huge fights in 2006 against Howard Eastman and against Arthur Abraham. His work in those two fights demonstrated his current status as one of the top five or six contenders in the middleweight division. And he'll be trying to hold on to that status later tonight against a very well, good American fighter named Willie Gibbs. an exciting fight for HBO. All right? That's all we're talking about. Don't try any harder, okay? Please. I love you. Give you some defense. That's all I want. All right? Litzau had a big round in the fifth when he landed 41 punches. He landed 42 in the sixth. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through six? Look at Jim. Five rounds to one. 58. 55, Jason Litzau. Jim, I gotta tell you, you know, Frankie Santori's the type of referee that doesn't let fights go too long. I got a funny feeling this is close to being stopped. But be as it may, Jason Litzau, great ring generalship. Using that big ring, whenever he moves, he sets up the six, seven punch combinations. The only time he gets hit is when he stops and stands right in front of Hernandez. Uh, Lennox called it longevity boxing, but I call it ring generalship. Jason Litzau. 58, 50, 55 on good punching and good ring generalship. You know, you look at Litzau's uh, five foot 10 inch frame, Lennox, and it, it seems abundantly clear to me he could move to 130, he could conceivably move to 135. I don't think it's out of the question. He's only 23. By age 30, he could be a welterweight. Definitely, I mean, you know, part of the reason a lot of these boxers move up because they, they realize they can make more money moving up. And uh, if he wants to make a lot more money, he's definitely going to move up. And that's what he says he wants to do is make more money. Classic case in point. Floyd Mayweather won a world championship in this weight class at 126 against Gennaro Hernandez. Fights Oscar De on right. May 6th at the 154-pound weight well, limit. We're talking about him boxing at 30. That's longevity boxing with his style, Jim. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, the way he fights, uh, half a dozen fights like this, I don't know much, how much longevity there will be. His, you heard his corner imploring him, all right, you've been exciting enough, now box from long range. Uh, he'd like to see him have some longevity in this sport, I think. Good uppercut with the left hand by Litzau, and Jose Hernandez's face is beginning to show very graphically the quality of Litzau's work. And you would have thought that the pale-skinned Anglo-Saxon Litzau would be the guy whose face would show damage but he is racking Hernandez up. Hernandez has a lot of heart, but he, he looks nice and softened up for the stoppage here from the work Litzau's done in the last couple rounds, especially. Did I say Anglo-Saxon? I think I should say Teutonic. But it's one of those. Right hand lands again for Hernandez. Litzau has that quality, Jim, you and I were talking about it earlier today, that Eric Morales had in the sense that, and, and a lot of really good action fighters have, he wants to be the last guy throwing the punch. And when he got hit with that right hand, his immediate thought was not defense, it was, let me get this guy back. Lennox, that instinct to want to be the guy who hits last, a smart instinct or sometimes a foolish one? Well, I think it's a smart time, instinct because you want to leave that impression with the judges that the fact that you're the last puncher in there and you're the one doing the work. Listen to me, Jose. That was a little bit around, but you're still moving back. You got to keep going forward on this guy. You know what I mean? And you got to keep moving your head. Okay? The jab's got to be an effective jab. Don't push it. Snap it out there. That's what we worked on. You hear me? Let's start snapping that jab and move that head a little bit. Keep them hands up. Nothing bad about this guy. Keep them hands up. You hear me? 
If you keep stepping over, he can't hit you. He can't hit you. Huh? What round is it? Next eight. Eight. Eight coming up. Eight, nine, ten, baby. Three more rounds. We're in the three round territory. Don't do anything crazy. Just keep stepping over and please keep moving to your right. Move to your right, move to your right, move to your right. All you gotta do is move to the right, baby. Compia Box total through seven rounds. Jason Litzow, 219 out of 521. Hernandez, 118 out of 453. In other words, Litzow has landed exactly 101 more punches in the fight. So despite the first round knocked down by Hernandez, catching Litzow with the right hand, it would now appear that the St. Paul, Minnesota star, still unbeaten, has assumed command of the fight. How much more of what's going on does Hernandez have? Oh, right hand by Hernandez. I and a series he, of body shots. As he lands a beautiful right hand <laughs> to the chin. <laughs> Hernandez knows that he needs to really pick up the pace, that he has to go for the knockout that he's behind on all score uh, points. Definitely. Something interesting about a guy with options who sees a future outside of boxing fighting like this in the face of this kind of beating that he's taken. Shows you the substance and the guts of Jose Hernandez. And he's wobbly even after he, or even as he goes after Litzau with a left and a right. Substance, guts, and a good straight right hand. Series of heavy punches from Hernandez there. <laughs> Showing tremendous resiliency. You know, I think Hernandez has a better idea. He's trying to punch his way back in. Trainer Sam Colonna asked him between rounds, throw the stiff jab. My feeling is if your guy hasn't thrown a stiff jab in seven rounds, he ain't gonna throw it. Let him throw his right hand. They are trading shots. Jim, let's how much must just feel that Hernandez can't hurt him at this point in the fight, but it's odd considering he put him on the deck earlier in the fight. Well, I think he's gonna get an even more concerted lecture from Bob Van Sickle between rounds. I mean, if the trainer wanted him to box before this round, and he hasn't, he came into the ring to slug in this round. He's doing the wrong thing because he's getting hit. He needs to get off the ropes, do what his trainer says, move around from long range and use that jab. He's getting right pounded on the ropes. Now Hernandez suddenly feels as though he's alive in the fight again. Hernandez knows what he needs to do. He's going for broke, and this is what you have to do. He, he knows he can hurt uh, Litzau. Litzau, so he's, try, he's trying his best to try to go for that knockout. And Litzau intelligently fires three straight shots to the body to try to slow Hernandez down. And the, the interesting thing, maybe the scary thing if you're a Litzau fan, Hernandez has not yet flashed his good left hook. Litzau's still conscious of the right hand. Oh. And now he he's right hand shot. from the right hand. And can he get up from this one? Can he get up? Six, seven, eight. He's not going to make it. Jason Litzau has been knocked out. And he did not listen to his trainer's instruction to box with the fight in the deep freeze. What a right hand. And let me tell you, I told you he was going for broke, and that's what he had to do. He had to go in there and throw every shot like it was coming from left field. What an intelligent comeback by Jose Hernandez. Dispensing with his corner's instructions to fire the jab, he went back to the big right hand, which was his only chance in the fight. The case of a guy imposing his will, and Litzau, you don't want to take any credit away from Hernandez, but he seemed to, in a way, let it happen. He didn't respect the right hand that had hurt him so badly earlier in the fight and walked into several of them in round eight. What a, what a comeback by Hernandez. What a comeback. Well, as we mentioned, he showed you his substance as a person. He showed you his commitment, the long amateur background, and the ability to come back, Lennox. And here it is. We're gonna see overhand right. It came from right field, and it landed square on the chin. Left hand down, too close to your opponent that can hurt you. Boom, over the top. And when, you're, when your opponent is hurt, and then there's was hurt a little bit in the last couple of rounds, but he came out strong. Another look, right hand from right field. And right Litzau was throwing with both hands, 
at the moment that the punch was launched, so there was no way he could defend himself against the right-hand shot. Litzau told us, no risk, no reward. He fights with risk. But you know, this is what happens. It doesn't always, you roll the dice, it doesn't always turn out in your favor. This is why some fighters choose to box when it's intelligent to do so, regardless of whether it's entertaining. Let's go to Lupe Contreras with the official particulars on the upset knockout win. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to a dramatic end with an official time of two minutes, 52 seconds of round number eight. Your winner, by way of knockout, Jose Andres Hernandez. Hernandez goes to 22 and four, or 22 and three. Jason Litzow is 20 and one. The pride of St. Paul falls to Round Lake, Illinois' Jose Hernandez. CompuBox numbers. Litzow landed 84 more punches, threw 39 more punches, landed at a significantly higher connect percentage. Power shots. Hernandez much closer in this category, almost the same numbers as Litzow, and ultimately it was Hernandez's right hand and Litzow's neglected defense that produced the knockout victory. Max Kellerman stands by now with Jose Hernandez. Congratulations, Jose. This fight was set up as the Jason Litzow story, ringside. We, I was telling the Jason Litzow story. How did you make it the Jose Hernandez story? Well, like I told my manager when we started, in 97, I won the Nationals and I was the underdog. And I told him, you know what, I'm gonna win it for everybody behind me, my dad, Sam, Larry, my mom, my everybody around me, I told him I was gonna win this fight and I was coming to win. Blood in your mouth, blood from your nose, your eye is swollen, your face is busted up, your corner was telling you to jab, you went to the right hand, why? Because I, I seen that first time when I dropped him in the first round, I knew that eventually he was going to fall in, and I knew if he kept on me and he wanted to fight, he was going to get caught, which he did. He started to fight with me, and he got caught. He did get caught. Were you surprised uh, that he kind of didn't respect the right hand late and was walking into it when you dropped him with it early in the fight? Well, like I told you earlier, you know, I know he, he believes in his power. I believe in my power. My power was better today. You can take a look at the knockdown, though we don't have a monitor, and yes, we do right here. Here's the knockout. Well, I knew that I was going to catch him with an overhand right. I told him, if he's taller than me, I had one right. I fought a guy 6-1 before, and I stopped him with an overhand right. They expected a straight right hand, and I would be, we worked we worked on the overhand. So you were setting him up for the overhand with the straight right earlier in the fight and throughout the fight? Correct. We knew the overhand was going to come in the later rounds, and we knew we, if we keep pressuring him, he was going to fall in the later rounds. Okay, you took the semester off from college to train. Seems like it paid dividends. Are you taking next semester off from college? In other words, are you now a full-time fighter? Well, like I told my manager, we're rated in the top 10 now. We're sticking to boxing for now. Congratulations, and thanks for a great performance. Thank everybody in Round Lake that's watching, I'll be there tomorrow at Copa's Bar. Everybody tomorrow, my family, thank you, everybody. Thanks a lot, thank you, HBO. A happy smile for Jose Hernandez after a significant upset victory, incidentally. All three judges gave the first round to Hernandez 10-8. All three judges scored each of the next six rounds for Litzau. Litzau was leading 68-64 on all three cards at the moment when he got careless and was knocked out. That's the kind of action we've seen all year long on HBO. Let's take a look at our boxing calendar as we head toward the end of the year.